Hello everyone, this is Brad. Today this is a tutorial talking about this uh, passing through effects. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. So let's start. So here we in Blender, let's go to the node editor. I'm going to add a plane and uh, add a procedural icosphere. I like the topology of an icosphere. And uh, then let's start with a cylinder, just to, to prove our concepts. And then I'm going to animate it. Uh, let's go to the y-axis. So uh, let's keyframe by hitting I. And then I'm translating it to pass through this cylinder. So now we have this animation, but there is no collision event. We're going to add a collision deformer. I've discussed this for uh, many times already. Uh, it's basically a recast node so that you can determine if uh, it hits and what's the hit position and you can uh, displace with these hit normals and even the hit distance and so on. Of course, in reality, this is a pretty complex uh, node group but you can just uh, use that freely. Okay, so now you add this cylinder into the collider and you disable this joint collider geometry. So now by playing this animation, you can see there is a actually kind of a deformation. It's just uh, not really like a kind of collision or passing through. It's like the cylinder is piercing through this icosphere. This is because this node tree is in uh, is executed every frame. So there's no relationship from frame to frame. And hence, we have this result. In order to execute this node tree from frame to frame, we're going to add a simulation zone. And you can plug the simulation inputs and simulation outputs uh, to keep this collision deforming inside. And now if you play this animation, you can see the deformation is always built on the top of the deformation from last frame. That's why you are having this passing through effect. Of course, at the end of the day, you are going to have this kind of disrupted geometry because this node group was not designed for this kind of simulation purposes. But uh, in this particular case, this is a tolerable issue because we are going to restore the position information of this icosphere. So here I'm going to take a store named attribute. The position is a vector. And you can name this attribute whatever you want, but I'm just going to type OP, so the original position. And we are going to call this original position uh, and use that within this simulation zone. And we are going to set this position. And uh, we are going to mix the position. So we are going to mix the current position with this original position. And we set the position. So now if we play this animation again, you can see uh, we have this deformation, but it also recovers its shape very quickly. So we can type 0 0.2 so that it will recover its shape a lot more slower. So you have this kind of effect of passing through. Next, I want to add some additional adjustments to this setup. For example, I want these two edges to involute towards the middle when it's restoring its shape. And in order to do that, I need a full value uh, for this collision. So I already constructed from this node group. And by x-ray, you can actually see this white portion is the part where it's absolutely colliding or deformed by this cylinder. And we're going to output this simulation 
output. So now by replaying this animation, then this fob will be cached. So we can visualize that outside. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is basically just to blur attributes so that you can see there is a kind of expansion of it. And I'm also going to subtract uh, with it itself. So that's only a trace on the edges is white or being selected and the part in the middle is black. And I'm going to use this value to set up the normal displacement. So this middle part is displacing towards the normal, which is towards either outside or inside. Then you have this kind of uh, involution. And basically this is it, and you can multiply with a value to make this involution a lot more or smaller. But basically this is kind of idea. And uh, as a last step, you can make this animation a lot more interesting if you add a inertial deformer. It doesn't really cost anything, it's just one node. You can see there is a kind of wiggling event after it's recovering its shape. You can make this factor more exaggerated. It looks like this. And you can also smooth this entire thing out with a smooth position. This is the equivalent to smooth modifier. But uh, this is up to your choice. There are lots of parameters that you can tweak, but at the end, this is kind of very simple. Okay. So this isn't a very complex setup. And I've discussed uh, many of the concepts in the past already. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time.